Hello students, this is Mr. Rio here, and today I'm going to talk to you some more about 3D shapes. So we already started talking about 3D shapes during our Zoom lesson on Friday. But right now we're going to talk more about 3D shapes. Right? I can't get enough of it. All right? 3D shapes are awesome. I mean, just look at this. This here's a 2D shape. This is a 2D poodle right here. Right? I just drew it. It's a 2D poodle. And 2D is all right. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But imagine this as a 3D poodle. I mean, wouldn't that be so much better? Let's let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna magically transform this 2D poodle into a 3D poodle. Oh my gosh! Here we go. Oh my! Now it's a 3D poodle. I mean, isn't this much much better? Hey, look at her. Beautiful. 3D. She's not just flat, right? All her little arms, her limbs stick out. Beautiful, beautiful little poodle. 3D shapes. Wonderful shapes. Okay. But now to the, to the kind of shapes that we're dealing with in third grade. Fortunately, we don't have to identify vertices on a poodle, right? Our shapes are going to be a little more simple. Let's check them out. Look down. Boom. These are the sorts of three-dimensional shapes that we are dealing with in third grade. And I introduced all these to you guys on uh, Friday, so hopefully you remember them. If not... Quick review. All right, let's check them out. So, again, we see here a three-dimensional figure is a solid figure that has length, width, and height. Okay, um, and these are the key words um, and the key attributes of 3D shapes that we're looking at, and which most most problems uh, are going to ask about on the start test would be like how many edges, how many vertices, how many faces does such and such a shape have? So this is what you should be talk, uh, thinking about as like the identifying characteristics of each of these shapes. And so let's check them out and let's see if we can identify the shapes based upon their characteristics. All right, so um, a polygon that is a flat surface. This is, this is something that's key here. A polygon that is a flat surface of a solid figure is a face, right? So if it's a flat surface, it's a face. If it's a curved surface, it's not a face. Like for example, even though this ball is actually a face, it's got a face on it, as far as like this definition of face is concerned, a uh, sorry, a sphere like this ball doesn't have any faces. I mean, this one, you can see it has one, two faces, but no, don't think about that. These are just drawn on faces. This actually has zero faces because a face has to be a flat surface on a solid figure. And these are, this is just like one giant curved surface, okay? So a sphere doesn't have any faces. Uh, please remember that. Here we go. An edge. An edge is the line segment formed where two faces meet. So an edge is where two faces meet. So when two flat surfaces meet, that's an edge. So here's an edge right here. Flat surface, flat surface meet, you get an edge. A vertex, vertex is a point where three or more edges meet. If three or more edges meet, it's a vertex. Okay, so right here you got one, two, three, boom, it's a vertex. Okay, in a 2D shape though, a vertex would just be the corner and it'd just be like where two edges meet in a 2D shape. But in 3D shape, it's where three edges meet. Okay, let's check it out. So here we have a rectangular prism. We've, we're going to check out the faces, the edges, and the vertices. Okay, so let's start with the faces. Uh, because this starts with the faces, and we've got one, two, three, that's the one in the back, four, five on the bottom, and then six would be in the front. There are six faces to this rectangular prism. And there are also six faces to a cube, right? And you could think of a cube in a rectangular prism, like try to think of it uh, in terms of like something that you, you, like an everyday object, like a dice, right? Like on a dice, there are numbers, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And it only goes up to six, usually, on a normal um, die because there are six faces. So if you remember, like, how many numbers are on dice, 
then you should remember how many faces are on a cube. And a rectangular prism also has six faces because it's just like a cube. It's just like a cube that's kind of stretched out. It's not all squares. Some sides are rectangles, okay? So it's just stretched out. And so you see they also have the same number of edges and the same number of vertices um, because really a cube is just a stretch, uh, a rectangular prism is just a stretched out cube or a cube is just a squeezed together rectangular prism. Okay, edges. So the edges are where faces meet. There's one, two, three, four edges on top, five, six, seven, eight edges when you count the bottom and don't forget the sides, nine, ten, 11, and then that one in the back, 12 edges. Great, we've got six faces, 12 edges. Now the vertices. Vertices is a fancy word for corners. How many corners does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. So um, as you're counting these um, on different 3D shapes, it's important to like kind of like check them off as you go so you make sure you count everything and you want to make sure you count everything just once though so you don't want to you know count the same thing over and over again so it's important to kind of do what I did there and either shade or or circle the different parts as you're uh, counting them again most problems uh, like on on the tests that we take regarding 3D shapes are going to be about counting these attributes or classifying uh, the shapes based upon the number of the attributes they have. All right, triangular prism. So we've got rectangular prism, we've got the cube. The only difference with the cube is that they're all squares, right? All sides are squares. Triangular prism, well, what's different here? I mean, this is a rectangular prism, this is a triangular prism. What has really changed? Well, I hope that some of you said, there are triangles. Correct, if you said that, good job. So a triangular prism has triangles as its bases, right? So two of the faces are triangles at either end, and then it's got rectangles on the sides. So if you, if you see the number of faces, we've got one, two faces that are triangles, and then this one in the back, three, this one in the bottom, four, and this one on top, five faces in all. So we've got two that are triangles and one, two, three that are actually rectangles. So there are five faces in all. And now how many edges does it have? Remember, the edges are where two, um, two faces meet. So we've got one, two, three edges there, four, five, six edges there, and don't forget the other edges, seven, one in the back is eight, and then nine edges. And then finally, the vertices, the, the corners again. Vertices is a fancy word for corners. If it's only one vertice, though, if you don't say one vertice, you'd say one vertex. All right, let's count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six vertices. There we go. All right, so these are the ones without any curved surfaces. These all have flat surfaces. The other solid figures that have curved surfaces, you see down here, you've got the cone, where it's got a circular face on the bottom, and it's got one vertex up top. One vertex, it meets at this point. And then you've got the cylinder, and it's got one face down here. One flat face down there. Right, and then you've got the cylinder, and it doesn't have any vertices, right? It doesn't have any corners on it, um, but it does have two faces, right? It has two faces. It's got the one on the top and the one on the bottom, and they're both circular, okay? Which is why it's round. It's a curved surface. And then there's the sphere. The sphere doesn't have any faces. It doesn't have any faces, okay? It's just one big circle. It doesn't have any vertices or no corners. It doesn't have any edges. All right? So the sphere doesn't have any of these uh, attributes.
All right, let's see if you can name the solid figure that the object is shaped like. So let's look down here. Let's see if you can name these. Uh, you can just write it down on a piece of paper or you can shout it out. You have about three seconds. Who can name this first object? Are you ready? Give you five seconds. Shout it out. Five, four, three, two, one. I heard somebody say sphere. Very good. Sphere. Next one. It doesn't have any vertices, any faces, any edges. It's a sphere. This one looks like a bowling ball. Next one. Got a cereal box. Who can name this object? Here we go. Five, four, three. Shout it out. Two, one. <gasps> Somebody said rectangular prism. Very good. This is a rectangular prism. Who can tell me how many faces does a rectangular prism have? Faces equals one, two, three. Is it just three? No, there are six because you got to remember the ones that we can't see on the opposite side. There's another face here. There's another face in the back. There's another face on the bottom. There are six faces. Okay. So sometimes the pictures are shown like this where you can't see through to those dotted lines, right? So you have to still imagine it. You might want to even make the dotted lines to help you see all the other uh, parts of this object, okay? Because sometimes, like, like for this type of picture, it's really easy because it shows you the dotted line. You can see through it. You can see all the vertices and all the faces. But for this one, you can't. So you can make your own dotted line to complete the picture to help you identify. Because if you're just looking at what you can see, you'd only see one, two, three faces. You have to realize that there are other faces there. You have to be able to imagine them. All right. Uh, how many edges? We know there are 12 edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve edges. And then, uh, of course, there are eight vertices as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. And remember, uh, draw those dotted lines so you can see those too. And then finally, ooh, what's this thing? It has a curved surface on the bottom. It's because it has a circular base, and then it's got one vertex up top. What is this? It's a five, four, three, two, one. Say it. Cone. All right. Okay. So now, uh, let's see. I'll show you the thing. You tell me what kind of shape it is. Ready? Boom. Coke can. Tell me you got three, two, one. If you said cylinder, you are correct. Next one. Mogi, be quiet. Box of lasagna. Box of lasagna. Five, four, three, two, one. If you said rectangular prism, you are correct. Last one. Oh, this is probably why it's sparking. Dog ear cleaner. Let's talk about just the cap of the dog ear cleaner. Mogi, time to run away, girl. Just the cap. Five, four, three, Two, one, it is a cone. The cap is a cone. It's kind of flat on top. All right. Okay, if you got those right, good job. You are becoming a master of three-dimensional solids. All right. So I challenge you, uh, as a master of three-dimensional solids, to build something using these three-dimensional solids. Here's a little example. So in my old uh, Go Math book, they made a clown using different three-dimensional shapes. Like you can see a cone on the hat and a little circle at the top of that cone hat. And a, or sorry, not a circle, a sphere. And a sphere head and a cylindrical body with triangular prisms for arms and cubes for hands and rectangular prisms for legs. Can you make a picture using every one of these three-dimensional shapes? Give it a try, all right? For fun, try to draw your own picture uh, and label it. And when we see each other uh, for the Zoom lesson on Tuesday, I'll ask, and if you got it, you can show me. If you didn't, you know, that's unfortunate, but I'd love to see it. So please, please, please show me. See you later. Bye-bye.